Mangal Pandey, a resident of Balia in Uttar Pradesh, was a soldier in the army of the British East India Company in Bengal. Mangal Pandey was born in a Bhumihar Brahmin family to Divakar Pandey of Surhupur village of Faisabad. He was a devout Hindu and practiced his religion strictly. Bahujan, Janvik and Mangal were talking among themselves. Hey friends, how are you? Just the usual things. What else can we look forward to? Why Janvik? Why do you speak in frustration? Mangal, we all hail from traditional families and we are bound to suffer here as soldiers. Janvik, this is our profession and we have to do justice to it. Mangal, only if our superiors are good to us, can we have some interest in our work. If our superiors ill-treat us, can we be true to our work? Bahujan, don't bother how others treat you. You have your ideas and aims, don't you? What do you mean by that? Yes, what do you mean? You should be a light to yourself. You should have a vision. What do you mean by that? Don't you love your country? Don't you love your mother? Yes, but how does that help me withstand ill treatment? Nothing comes for free in this world. You have to pay a price for that. Bahujan and Janvik were silent. A new understanding seemed to dawn on them. For everything, hard work is needed. Willpower and determination will give you direction. That will show you the meaning of life. Hmm, Manga, you talk like a great leader. But we are only soldiers. Each of us is a human being. Every one of us has feelings and inner strength. When these are rightly tapped, anyone can become a leader. I am not the only person to be offended by the actions of the British. There surely are thousands of young soldiers boiling inside against the atrocities heaped on them. You are right, Mangal. But how are we to show our protest and who will lead us? I will lead you. Bahujan and Janvik were shocked to hear this. Manga, are you joking? There is imposition of British goods, British food, British clothes, British education, British systems and what not. How can we alone protest? What are we going to do? There is a limit to our frustrations, Bahujan. Once things exceed the limit, our feelings will automatically explode. It will happen one day. If we alone resist, we will be shot like dogs. The worst that can happen to us is death. But if we are scared, first of all, we cannot survive as soldiers. Mind it. Your words are inspiring. My fear is gone. I feel the same, Mangal. If we rise our voice, there will be millions to fight with us. Don't worry. Let's proceed. The friends left the place. The atrocities of the British continued. Days later, 
Mangal and Bahujan met for lunch. And Janvik came running to him. Mangal, look at this. Mangal took the small packet from Janvik. When he opened it, his expression changed. What is it, Mangal? It looks so sticky. Bahujan, this packet was given to all of us for greasing the cartridge of the gun. What happened to the oil we usually get? Who knows? This looks stupid. Mangal threw the packet on the floor. Mangal. Janvik, it is animal fat. Oh no! What nonsense! The company wants to destroy not only us, but also our traditions. We cannot tolerate this. Small arms and gun manufacturing using interchangeable parts took off in America in the first half of 19th century. In the 1851 Great Exhibition, the gun exhibits by US companies attracted great fanfare. In 1854, a factory was established in Enfield to develop and deploy new rifles using interchangeable parts. The cartridges were produced in Fort Williams, Calcutta and supplied to the depots where instructions were handed out on their usage. One depot in Calcutta, Dum Dum, later giving its name to the bullet developed there was the source in early 1857 of rumors that the grease used to waterproof the paper was made up of a mixture of cow and pig fat. When the conversation was going on like this, another soldier came and joined them. Did you see the grease material given to the Sepoys Mongol? Everyone says it is animal fat. It is extracted from the cow and the pig. Hey, I will kill the ones who scoff at our traditions. We have to bite the cartridges before use. I cannot use this. Their ultimate aim is to drive all of us home and appoint British soldiers in our place. This is atrocious. The cow is venerated by us. Giving us cow fat is the worst insult to us. Let us put an end to this. Let us protest. Let us see an end to this. The cartridge was greased with animal fat, primarily pig fat and cow fat, which animals are not consumed by Muslims and Hindus respectively. The former being abhorrent to Muslims and the latter a holy animal to the Hindus. The cartridges had to be bitten at one end prior to use. The revolters thought that this was an international act of the British. The aim being to humiliate the soldiers by insulting their religious sentiments. The next day, the cartridge was given to everyone, including Mangal Pandey. Mangal threw the packet down. The officer, Lieutenant Bong, who noticed this, was shocked. This was the first time an Indian soldier had shown the courage to disobey orders. Hey you! Pick it up. Mangal did not answer. His friends were with him.
Hey, you, pick it up. Mangal did not move. It came as a surprise to all the soldiers who were observing this incident. Suddenly, the officer takes his gun and gives a blow to Mangal Pandey on his shoulder. Mangal Pandey falls down. The next moment, he rises from the ground and gives a blow on the face of the officer with his gun. The whole crowd had the shock of their lives. The officer was stunned for a moment. You seize him! Suddenly, a British soldier seizes him and assaults him. Mangal Pandey falls down. News spreads like wildfire everywhere. No one dared to attack a British officer of a regiment. This was the first time in Indian history. This incident was the first act of what came to be known as the Sepoy Mutiny of 1857 or the First War of Indian Independence. On 29th March 1857, at Barakpur near Calcutta, Mangal Pandey started the first protest against the British. Egged on by this protest, revolts arose in many parts of the country. A few days later, at Barakpur, Lieutenant Bo was informed that soldiers of his regiment were in an excited state. The British soldiers approached Lieutenant Paul. Sir, the British soldiers are very violent. Don't tell me the same story again. I don't want this fellow Mangal Pandey to do any mischief again. So, we should have strong evidence to hang him. What sort of evidence do they require? On that day, all the soldiers present were Indian. Only you and me were British. The Indian soldiers will not betray Mangal Pandey. You don't talk sense. Call Sai Patlo, who is an Indian but very loyal to us. Call him. The next moment, Patlo was called. Patlo comes in. My humble wishes to the great general. I was asked to be present before you, your majesty. <laughs> Good. My dear man, learn from Patlu how to behave. The British soldiers were tight-lipped. Patlu, I have to do something about that fellow, Pandey. He has to be hanged, your majesty for disobeying you. Correct. You are very correct. Better have to do it. It's easy, my lord. Just provoke him and keep quiet. He will dig his grave himself. <laughs> I will do the needful. Wonderful. We have to provoke him. Just then, a soldier comes running. Sir! What happened? Why are you in haste? Sir! Mangal Pandey is standing with his gun in the practice ground. He declares that he will shoot any European he sees first. Stupid! What have all of you been doing? No, sir, we cannot do anything. He's ready with his gun and we just cannot peep out of our cabins. What nonsense. If you're scared of facing him, go die with him. Patlu, who was watching all this, figured that the right opportunity to influence Bo had come. Sir, can I interfere your speech just for a second? Bo who was furious, turns back to Patlu. Go ahead. 
Sir, this is the opportunity I was telling you. He need not be provoked. He is already provoked. You can face him and I will be there to prevent him from going any further. You mean to say that you will protect me? Oh my great lord, I am under your mercy. How can I protect you? Tell me fast. Sir, I will go and meet Mangal. He will not harm me as I am an Indian. In between you can please come. When he attacks you, I will hold Mangal and you can arrest him and saying that he tried to kill you. Excellent. And trying to shoot an officer is the highest offense and he will be hanged for that. Everything has to happen legally. Only then we will not have any problem in future. <laughs> You are a master boy. I will prevent you, don't worry. Thank you, sir. Patlu left the place and reached the ground. A heavy silence hung over the place. Hearing footsteps, Mangal turned like a tiger. He was standing behind a pillar. He aimed his gun at Patlo and Patlo screamed. Hey you Mangal! I am your friend! Stop it! Mangal looks at Patlo cautiously as he knew well about Patlo's loyalty for the British. Mangal withdrew his gun. Hey, I had the shock of my life. Do I look like a British soldier to you? I know it's you. But why did you aim at me? I can even spare a British soldier, but not you. Why? 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 You know the answer. Don't distract me. Get away from here. Hey, are you angry with me? Patlu, move away from here. Uncle, what did I do? Mangal was seriously looking outside to see if he could aim at a Britisher. Patlu pulled at Mangal's gun. Take off your hand, Patlu. You are worse than any British soldier. They are united and they fight for their country. But you are a poisonous thorn in our flesh. <laughs> you want me to be a fool like you? <laughs> at the same moment, when Mangal's attention was distracted by Patlu, Bor immediately buckled on his sword, placed loaded pistols in his holsters, mounted his horse and galloped to the ground. Mangal, who heard the sound of the approaching horse, took position behind the station gun, which was in front of the pillar. took aim at Bohr and fired. He missed Bohr, but the bullet struck his horse in the flank, and both horse and rider were brought down. Oh. Sir! Oh no! Bohr quickly disentangled himself and seizing one of his pistols, advanced towards Pandi and fired. He missed. Before Bohr could draw his sword, Pandey attacked him with a talwar, a heavy Indian sword, and slashed him on the shoulder. Bohr fell to the ground. Pandey 
was preparing to reload the gun. Suddenly, Patlu interfered. Patlu tugged at Pandey's hand. Hey, leave me! Patlu caught both hands of Pandey and held them tightly at the back with vehement force. In the meantime, another Indian soldier by name Ishwar came running to the scene. He threatened Patlu. Patlu, you are a heartless fellow. Leave him otherwise I will smash your head. But Patlu did not have the heart to leave Mangal. Ishwar gave a blow on Patlu's head and Patlu fell down. His grip was slightly loosened and in the meantime, Bor came closer to Pandey. Hey, you stupid fell. You want to shoot me? Carry it up. Right away. Bor looks at Patlu. Mangal prepared to shoot. But Patlu sprang at him. Mangal fell down. Immediately, Bor drove his horse and moved in the opposite direction. Mangal kicked Patlu and aimed at Bor. The deafening report of the gunshot brought everything to a standstill. British soldiers rushed out to Pandey and caught him. Pandey understood the seriousness of his position and aimed his gun to shoot himself. He clicked the trigger. Surrounded by guards and European officers, He tried to commit suicide. He collapsed, burnt and bleeding, but not mortally wounded. Take him away to the car. Don't show any mercy on him. Patlu looks at Bo, drawing his attention to Ishwar. Troops! Drag the fellow who helped this rebel. When the soldiers were looking for Ishwar, Patlu identified him. The troops dragged Pandey and Ishwar to the court. Show him what our interrogation can be. Patlu comes running to Bo. Bo pats him on the shoulder. You promoted as Havel there. Native sergeant. Are you happy? Patlu's face lit up. Thank you. Thank you, Your Majesty. Pandey was taken prisoner and questioned strictly. Bo's statements were very strong. Pandey was very weak and was unable to answer anything as he was terribly wounded. You are Mangal Pandey? Yes. The case has been registered that you are a rebel from the beginning and you were against the government. Mangal was calm. You accept for this? People who fight for their rights are not rebels. I'm speaking about your case. Just tell me you're a rebel or not. Mangal was calm. Why did you attempt to kill Bob? Mangal gives a stern look at the officer. Answer my question. We are all human beings. All of us have emotions. When our emotions are hurt and we are insulted, we tend to rebel. No philosophy is here. Your only aim was to kill the officers. And that was the reason for you joining the army. Mangal looks at the lawyer. You have attempted to provoke the supporters against the army. You have brainwashed them to fight the British. You have been enlisting other supporters to join your cause. If you keep on poking at your wall, one fine day it will turn back and resist. Again, you are trying to move away from the point. 
I am not afraid of death, but look at the situation impartially. Your rights have not been deprived in any manner. The truth is that you have taken the law into your hands and tried to kill your superior. Mangal did not answer. Rather, he did not want to answer. The lawyer questions Lieutenant Ball. You are Mr. Ball. Yes. Did Mangal Pandey plan to kill you? Yes, it was pre-planned. He tried many times, but he failed. Do you suspect anyone along with him? A big gang of rebels, with this man being the leader. The main reason for all this is the suspicion of animals far from the Greece. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. You mean to say that there is no animal fat on that? This foolish idea is so deep rooted in their minds that it would be both idle and unwise, even to attempt its removal. So you say that there is no truth in this? These fellows are doing it deliberately to incite religious hatred against us. Why should I be blamed for it? But the belief is so widespread among the sepoys. I would accordingly beg leave to recommend for the consideration of the government of ordering this rifle ammunition to be made up of the same paper used for the common musket cartridge, by which means this groundless suspicion could be at once disposed of. Fine. That can be decided by the government. But what about Mangal Pandey? The government has to decide. He certainly has to face the charges of gross misbehavior. Now the lawyer turns to Mangal. It has been reported that you have used illicit drugs before trying to kill Borg. Pandey is pained by the atrocious charges, but he remains tight-lipped. It is the charge that your friend Ishwar instigated you to kill Borg and that you too hatched a plot to do so. Pandey asserted at the top of his voice. No! 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 This is totally false! You were keeping quiet for everything, but when it comes to your friend, you want to defend him. I have done everything on my own. My friend Ishwar does not have any role in this. Please spare him. Mangal stood like a rock and faced all the charges. There was accusation after accusation. The lawyer went on speaking, but Mangal could not hear anything. His eyes were on his friend Ishwar. All that he could hear was the judgment. Mangal Pandey is a rebel and his main intention is to kill the British officers. He and his friend Ishwar are drug users and they are inebriated while on duty. He is a threat to the officers. If he is released, he can kill them at any moment. He will be hanged along with his friend Ishwar at Barakpur. Voices were heard protesting against the judgment. But Mangal Pandey stood like a fearless tiger and his friend Ishwar stood with him. There were no signs of fear or sorrow. Mangal Pandey and Ishwar were hanged at Barakpur on April 8 and 26th of 1857.